Happy February 1st. Welcome to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez. And today, this captivating image it tells us we have an unboxing. Uh, very appropriate, this knife here. We'll see. We'll look at that later. Um, anyway, so for any new viewers, I'm Javier Hernandez. I'm a cartoonist known for his comic book, El Muerto. Um, been doing it since 1998. Here's a art book I did on the character a few years ago. Um, so yeah, 23 years self-publishing my comic El Muerto and, and other comics. Um, but I do this YouTube channel where it's called Los Comics TV, obviously. And I just talk about definitely a lot of my work, but also things that, um, I just love to sink my teeth into comics I love that I've read that I uh, collect and study um, sometimes you know we'll talk about movies we'll even be talking about toys later other episodes um, but anyway just things that have inspired me throughout the years um, things that influence me but today this is an unboxing I'm sure you've seen these before where I got a box in the mail the other day and I'm going to open it on camera because, yes, that's a thing. People like to see that. I do, too. I don't know why. It's fat. like, oh, what's in the box? Um, so, anyway, I'll get started. I had already cut the top open, and I took off the bubble wrap of the items because, you know, I don't want to spend too much time unwrapping it in front of you. Um, so, let's just get started, and I'll tell you what this stuff is in a moment. Uh, so, let me just... Pull the box out of the camera. Let me put the two little wrapped things there. So that's that. So I did take the bubble wrap off earlier. And I figured this would be pretty quick to uh, unveil this way. Like I said, these things are very popular with people. And, and again, yeah, I'll be captivated there watching it too. Okay, I'll put it there so you already see the title. So these are some manga I got. And as you tell by the title, uh, Crying Freeman. So let's, we'll talk about what Crying Freeman is here. These are all mixed up here. Uh, okay, so there's five volumes. Uh, one, two, Three, four. Okay, well, at least uh, as far as the customer, I got all my five volumes in here. They don't look like they're uh, shredded up or anything. Uh, so let's see. Let's put them. They're not all going to fit here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let me just start with the first one here. Let me move this. Let me move these out of the way here. Um. So, Crying Freeman, it's a Japanese manga, uh, came out in 86 through 88 in Japan, originally serialized in uh, one of their large, uh, month, I think it was a monthly comic, um, and then it was picked up by Viz, let me show you this, I actually had these already um, back in the 90s, Viz, Viz, a uh, very long time American company putting out Japanese uh, translations of Japanese uh, comics. So they're one of the early, definitely one of the longest running uh, companies releasing Japanese manga in the U.S. Um, so I had heard originally of Crying Freeman from an anime car car uh, cartoon series, right? Which ran from, I think, uh, when did that come out? I think it was like late 80s to early 90s. There was also a movie on... Crying Freeman, as is the case with a lot of Japanese uh, manga that gets just, you know, adapted to anime, movies, and of course, you know, TV shows and merchandise juggernauts. Uh, this was a film with uh, Mark Dacascos playing the title character, which came out, I guess, in the late 90s. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact date. But anyway, so why buy these again? Well, you know, I hadn't read it in years, and um, what I understand, too, is the, the yeah, the so anyway, Viz did it originally in the 90s, and then um, Dark Horse 
picked up the license and reprinted the whole series again in uh, the mid 2000s, which I didn't collect these at the time. But what Dark Horse ended up doing was printing them in the original Japanese uh, configuration, right? Japanese comics and books. They're read from, um, what is it, right to left? Is that correct? Because the book opens. See, in, Amer in the U.S., the West, we open the books. This is the front of the book, and then we open it this way. I guess it's called left to right. See, they've put a little thing, stop. This is the back of the book. So Dark Horse ended up printing it in the original Japanese uh, format. So the book starts here. This is the first page, and then you, you turn it this way, and then you go this way. Whereas when Viz did it, because manga was still kind of new to the U.S. as far as... It had been around already, but, you know, but they figure American readers, they want to read their comics starting on this side. So, it's actually a little smaller, too. A little smaller, but... Um, anyway, so it's uh, the series was written by Kazuo Kiyoki, who wrote, uh, I believe, yeah, Lone Wolf and Cub. I believe he passed away, didn't he, a year or two ago. Um, but prolific writer, but he wrote the whole series. And the artist, uh, Ryoki Ikegami, um, a fantastic artist. Uh, he did. He also did My the Psychic Girl, which I, I'll review those on the show. I did get copies of those some years ago, finally. And he also, in the 70s, believe it or not, uh, Ryoki Ikegami, um, I don't have him with me, but he did in Japan uh, Spider-Man comics. You know, Marvel licensed out Spider-Man to a publisher there. So then that comp that the publisher just wrote and drew, uh, I think, pretty much original stories. I mean, they'd, they'd have the villains in it, Mysterio, Electro, um, and the same costume, right? But just kind of more supernatural, wild takes on Spider-Man. So anyway... I'm a big fan of this man's artwork. Um, as you'll, you know, let me show you some of the artwork. It's very uh, photo realistic. In fact, some of these images, they're probably Xeroxes of uh, photographs, right? Because I mean, they're so precise. Uh, but that's an art. That is an art. I mean, it's not just a cheap Xerox or whatever that's reproduced. Um, but I mean, yeah, he's known for size. So just his beautiful drawing, the very detailed drawings. I mean, technically, that's like perfect, the perspective and all the detail on that, that fireplace in that room. Um, of course, you know, Japanese uh, artists work with assistants. So to crank out this much work in that amount of time, you definitely need a lot of people applying the zipper tones and doing background detail. And I mean, look at that. Look at that cityscape. Again, that looks like a photograph. Um, but then the, there's the beautiful artwork. Just uh, sometimes really just quick gestural art. And sometimes it's very detailed. Um, so what Crying Freeman is, the title always caught my mind, caught my attention when I first heard this anime. Like, why is he crying? Crying Freeman. So it's this uh, young, he's a potter, Japanese potter. Um, Yo Hinomura. He, what happens is, so he's just a regular guy, you know, law-abiding citizen. He ends up finding that he has some film in one of his pots. Someone dropped through a piece of, a roll of film. Remember film in the days? These come on a roll. Um, boy, that seems so ancient now. So he found a roll of film in one of his pots. And it turned out, he looked at the film, developed it, and it was a, it was a murder scene. Someone was getting killed and someone photographed it. So uh, the person who witnessed that murder, just trying to hide that film, threw it in one of his pots. He was on exhibit. And then um, the organization that committed the murder found out, somehow they found out he had the film, and they asked him to give the film back before he turned it into authorities, and he refused. So what they do, they capture him. And this is the bizarre part of the story, um, which is I, what I, I love it, because it's very unconventional. Um, so they, they kidnap him, um, and then, you know, one of, the one of the things they do, they put this huge dragon tattoo on his front and back of his body. Um, it's a Chinese uh, mafia called the 108 Dragons. And then they hypnotize him and they do things to him where he becomes their chief assassin. Is that crazy? Like to just take a guy off the street and against his will, uh, turn him into your top assassin. You train him and um, yeah, hypnotize him and all this stuff. 
So he goes and does their bidding as their assassin. So every time he kills somebody, you know, because that one part of him is still human, buried deep inside. Well, I mean, well, he's still human, but that one part of him that remembers his past life. The minute he kills a person, he sheds tears for them. But then he goes on and, you know, keeps working for them. Eventually, the 108 Dragons makes him their leader. So, yeah, I know. He goes from just innocent, being an innocent artist, potter, to the top assassin and the leader of this international Chinese uh, criminal organization called the 108 Dragons. They come equipped with their own uh, nuclear submarine, nuclear-powered submarine. So, um it, they, they seem like they're James Bond villains that came over from the Bond movies into this uh, book series. So anyway, th th this is volume one. Uh, I'm just going to skim through the other ones, but this one I'll take a little more time. A lot of this, I just want to look at this. Look at the artwork. Look how beautifully detailed it is in spots. Um, but yet it's also, you know, he's a great cartoonist because look at the action, just the flow of the the flow of the uh, characters, and it's never static. I mean, look at that. You know, I'm sure the artists use a lot of photo references, um, capturing people and faces and such, but it's the cartooning here that's so awesome. So here he kills the guy, and there he's shedding some tears. And so what happens, this is one of the missions, early missions. Um, he kills this guy out in this out in this park, this field. And there's a woman, a painter, another artist. She's out there painting and she she witnesses the murder. So that means she witnesses him murdering. Um, yeah, the tears are just flowing here. So eventually he takes off because, you know, might not attract attention. But first he sees her. She offers him a little napkin to wipe his tears I think that's sweet of, their, of her. And, um, of course, he has to kill her because she saw him. They find out where she lives. Um, there's her. Imu Hino is her name. Uh, she knows she's going to be killed. She, so, you know, she painted him. She saw him. And then he makes his way to her place. I mean, yeah, just look at the art. This is, I mean, the perspective on this is inside the car. Again, we're talking about that photorealism. Again, it's some type of Xerox reproduction, that car. It's just, it's. I mean, it's just so perfect. But then you got to add in all the details in the background. Um, that the great shading he does on the characters. I mean, like I said, this, this, the artwork on this book is just so top of the line. Then you got like, a, you know, kind of a simplified drawing. So it, it all works together. Again, these very detailed photorealistic maybe even photographic uh, artworks. So, just look at that art. I want to get to the part where he uh, he gets to her house. Yeah, they draw, so yeah, Mr. Yo, his name is Yo Hinomura. And then he's given a Chinese name, an identity, right? Once he becomes part of the 108 Dragons. Um, so he's got to come to kill her. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of neat, right? Tape on the window, and then you break it, so it's supposed to muffle the sound. Um, yeah, I just love these. Uh, I, love, I just love these scenes. These quiet scenes. He's walking through the dark house. He sees the painting of himself that she did, and um, Yeah, he's been waiting. Oh, so he's waiting in our house all day. Again, I haven't read this like in 20 years. Um, sleeping on her bed. All right. And she's on her way home. Okay, this is the police that's court dropping her off because they know she witnessed the murder. Um, oh, I gotta watch. So I gotta watch some of this stuff because uh, you don't want to get flagged on YouTube. That's always here. So. I guess it's a matter of what if someone complains to them and then they pull it. So yeah, I gotta I, now. Now I'm on notice. I gotta be careful because one thing about these books, in fact, Dark Horse got smart and the last three volumes they remember to put the sticker on the parental advisory, explicit uh, content warning. Um, 
So she's back home after a shower and he's <laughs> he's removed the painting, right? So he's in the frame, which is kind of a neat little trick. And she sees that. There he is. And um, basically, she just kind of fell in love with him. And he, I, I guess, yeah, returning the favor. So she has one request before he kills her, and that's they uh, can, you know, spend the night together, which uh, they do. There's this tattoo. So I'm going to gotta skip all this stuff. Um, for some reason, I guess violence is okay in America, right? So the one of the, you know, one of the people from the organization who did the killing earlier comes to kill her, but comes to kill her so he kills him so eventually what happens is crying freeman takes her in as his uh lover and even wife and then she gets a tattoo and then she becomes part of the one away dragon right the leader and his bride um two japanese citizens and now they are pretty much installed at the top of the hierarchy of the chinese mafia 108 dragons and that's your story. That's At least that's the start of it. Um, wow. This guy's chained up and being sliced up. So, this is, uh, yeah, this man. He was the one who uh, kidnapped Yo Hinomura. And then his wife, I think they're called uh, Dragon Father, Dragon Mother. And, um, yeah, here's where he's getting, here's where he's, they captured him and they're gonna tattoo him up. They got him tied up to a statue here. Yeah, here he's uh, up on a chair tattooing him. Oh no, he's actually uh, doing acupuncture. He's putting needles in his neck. Yeah, that's what it was. This is where he's telling him, "You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be our assassin." So he's kind of, I guess, starting the brainwashing technique with these little acupuncture type needles in the pituitary gland. So yeah, here's where he's being kind of just taken over and he wakes up in a hotel and then there's a later on he'll be getting his uh, tattoos and there's uh, the mother mother dragon so um, okay so this woman is putting the tattoo they take him to a place he's getting the tattoos put on him There you go. So now, you know, he eventually gets, uh, he's all tatted up. He's been brainwashed. He's now, uh, here he is on a, out on a gig. There's this crime boss. And uh, the old, the old knife in the umbrella trick, right? <laughs> this is a great page. Just like the layout, the action. But then the actual artwork, right? The detail on it. This is this is really cool. Kind of reminds me of a uh, an old Marvel comic when Ditko would show a Spider Man or Gene Colan would show Daredevil doing that, doing a big flip, and you see him in motion there. That's great. Um, so that's uh, Volume One, basically the origin story of uh, Crying Freeman. Look at, look at the art on here. Just this nice, uh, yeah, just, just the, the, I don't know, just the soft pastel feel of these uh, gray tones. Um, and the, the super detail in that, that image. So, here's Crying Freeman killing somebody again because you can tell he's crying and there's a lot of, well, there's a knife sticking in that guy's mouth. That kind of gave it away. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this frantic page. The paneling on this, a lot of panels, ang angled different ways. Uh, yeah, just the whole scene's a bloodbath here. Blood on the roof, ceiling. So, whoops! There we go. Yeah, I gotta skip a lot of this stuff. We gotta keep this channel somewhat, you know, passable. But anyway, so I, yeah, all the volumes are here. I'm um, looking forward to giving this another read. Like I said, it's been probably about 20 years since I read it. Um, and now I'll be able to read it in the exact proper format formatting. It's in English. But, you know, it, it does matter. Like, the way the original artist drew it, right? Like, he, he drew this. 
and then he you know he expects you to turn the page and start here and go this way and the and next page flows that way so when they have to change it in the US this would this page this page would come first and then this page after and then sometimes yeah then they sometimes flip the art so this guy ends up on this side but when you do that then you start changing the hairstyle right it's no longer parted on one side it's on so there's different ways to get around it but so you're not getting the 100% um, visual intent of the artist, you know. Um, so it's nice to get these like that. So like I said, for the purpose of, well, people throwing up. I, I can show that on YouTube, right? So just for the purpose of um, self-censoring, self-editing, um, probably not going to skim through every page because I don't want to like, oops, I can't show and then I got to close the book and then it's like, oh, look at that. Look at this page. This guy with the sharp teeth. Was, oh, th well, we got to show this. It looks like, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. There's this one. Oh, they're, 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 they're at a meeting. Yeah. They're at the meeting. Uh, the leader of the 108 dragons, Yohi Nomura is having a meeting with all the bosses of the 108 dragons but here's one of the bosses but apparently you just hug at him there uh opens his mouth so it's like he's turned on us right and he's about to bite freeman on the throat freeman's got to act quick so he hoists the guy up look at this he hoists him up and over and slams the guy's head on the floor and actually it's like he cracks the head open uh that's a nice move um yeah, so like I said, it's a, it's a crime story. It's also a love story because, right, him and, wow, the former artist, now known as uh, the wife of the leader of the 108 Dragons. So it, it's a trippy, uh, the whole premise is like mind-blowing. But I like it because it's kind of like something you find in an exploitation movie where it's just kind of totally over the top. Like it's asking you like, okay, if you want to overdo the logic behind this and that, then this may not be for you. But if you want to go along on a wild ride on with a real bizarre premise, but executed so magnificently, uh, as you can see here in the art, then this book is probably for you. So one thing about Freeman. Um, so, yeah, he's he's happily married to the uh, to Emu, but because he is it's kind of like James Bond, because he goes on all these missions as part of his, uh, you know, being the leader of a crime organization, he often runs across many, many, many women in the line of duty, and sometimes, you know, to get information out of them or to gain their trust, he just uh, willfully, you know, joins up with them, hooks up with them, and sometimes it has to be very passionate. He has to convince them. One way or the other. Yeah, this book, like I said, is nudity display on full display in many, many of the pages. Um, both Freeman and uh, the co-star women of the of the story. So, so yeah, like I said, what I was saying about him and his... Uh, so, we can't say he's being, you know, disloyal to his wife because he's just doing his job. And then he goes back to his wife. And um, I'm going to assume she knows what he has to do. But because that's part of the job. So anyway, yeah, this is just a fantasy story, folks. That's just the, the that's just the character's makeup. Um, but it, yeah, again, it's just part of that outrageousness of the uh, of the story. Let someone got their throat cut open here. So this isn't a proper review where I go through each book and tell you the plot and what's going on and everything. It's just sharing, you know, me getting these new books in and. Um, Added them to my collection and just skimming through them and kind of going off memory on these. Um, oh yeah, there's a there's a one story. There's like a wrestling uh, plot, so get a lot of wrestling action here. Reminds me of those Japanese wrestling comics. Um, if I remember, Freeman does enter the ring in a mask later. So yeah. Yeah, I know you probably you can free freeze frame the video later. And you want to see certain pages? Uh, yeah, I wanted to show the wrestling thing. Gee, who's that? He's wearing a mask. Um, 
when I first saw this, it tripped me out because the the other wrestler, it looks like he's literally 15 feet tall. Okay, here we go. Here's a great shot. Here's the referee. There's Freeman. There's the other guy. Andre the Giant would probably be about here. This guy is still another three or four feet taller. Um, you know, look, look at the size difference. Now he's, he, literally, he literally looks like a giant character. You know what I mean? Like in the superhero comic, Giant Man. But that's just the artistic license, right? Like, is he really a 20-foot tall giant? Or is it just being drawn that size? Let's just show the menace of it. Um, when, it first, when I first saw this, it kind of threw me off years ago. But again, I don't know, just as an artist or just a, you know, reading, reading, it's like, I like it. You know, he's taking, literally taking on a giant or is, you know, again, right here, is he a giant? Anyway, um, there you go. If you want gun accurate drawings, this book's for you. <laughs> oh, look at the, just, yeah, look at the gray tones on here. These uh, washes. I mean, look at that. Look at that building. Stunning. This here, this hallway. Um, but look at the. Uh, wow. I don't know how that's even done. The gray tones. Yeah, someone's like wa ink wash. And maybe a lot of inking. Zip a tone here and there. Um, stunning artwork, though, right? We can, I don't think we can. We can't deny that the artwork is stunning. If the story's not to your liking, that's okay. Um, so that's, yeah. I'm going to make shorten the video. Yeah, explicit warnings. But um, looking forward to reading, like I said, rereading these again and enjoying the. This, this storyline is a trip. What can I tell you about it? They make a. Um, what can I show you about it? Well, here's, okay, this page looked fine, I guess. Um. This rival organization, they make a, a double of Crime Freeman. Not so much a clone, right? They don't grow from a cell, but they get... Actually, they get two. They get two guys that look like him. Plastic surgery, so he looks just like him. They give him the tattoos. And this woman has to test out his uh, lovemaking prowess because they, want to, they need to send Freeman back to his wife, right? So they got to make sure he... Uh, he can pass the test. So there's a lot of testing. <laughs> she tests both of them like crazy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is this issue. You definitely want to skip through a lot of it because there's a lot of action going on. Now, this is some. This is a nice little page. This also his wife Emu also becomes you know a great swords swordsman herself. Um, through training. Yeah, nice detailed page of all these uh, people in this restaurant. Wow, look at that. It's being lowered on a winch, looks like. Onto the boat. Yeah, it's dropped. In the water, it comes out. Again, you know, it's great storytelling. He's tight. It's like his hands are tied behind his back. Yep, and he's still going to kick some ass. You can't keep a good potter down, right? Okay, uh, this is the last one. I'll get through it really quick, and then uh, I think we'll be wrapping up this video. But, yeah, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure there's never a sequel to this. This is just that two-year run, right, in uh, five volumes here. Um, but, yeah, both men went on to do plenty of other work. So, they've had full careers. But this is the saga of uh, Crying Freeman. Here's some gangster stuff, right? Got guys in suits and hats and guns. Because it is a crime story at, at heart. At its core, I guess. Or at least the premise of it. Um, I 
I like this kind of wide angle shot in the limousine. See, there's a, again, that's probably a photograph. Somehow, re, you know, reproduced. Could be a, like a real high-res photocopy. They paste it on. But then you gotta, so someone's gotta add all the speed lines. Yeah, no, the I'd love to see the original pages to these, um, to these some of these manga, particularly this one. Because there seems to be a lot of work, not just the drawing part, but like things being pasted on. Because this would be pre-digital, right? So um, I'm guessing that it might have been pasted on some of the some of the images. Yeah, like there's a school photograph. Those guys might be drawn in, but these might be actual people from a school. That looks like it's hand drawn, right? So a guy getting shot. I hope that I hope they didn't have a reference for that. Um, wow, look at these look at these scenes of carnage. But the artwork is just so beautiful. Ryoki Ikegami of Spider-Man fame. <laughs> and um, Mai the Second Girl, of course. And let's see. Should I show you the last page? This is interesting. Yeah, the ending's just very, it's a very quite like, just came back from a killing, just got done killing somebody. His wife walks into the room and wipes his tears away. See, it's a romantic comic. This comic's, uh, if you like nice romance, this book's for you. Just don't mind all the, uh, the gore, the blood, the killing, the assassinations. So there we go. A new, uh, New set, new volume set of Crying Freeman by Kazuo Kiyoki and Ryoki Kegami. So that's it. And this is my, yeah, my official Crying Freeman blade that came with the book. Right, by Pillsbury. There we go. Crying Doughboy. Anyway, that's it. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, maybe it'll take your interest to check out the Crying Freeman. Uh, books. Uh, there's an anime series. I'm sure that's floating around out there. And then there was a. Uh, there's actually two movies. I understand. I have one of them. The one. Uh, it's a Canadian production, I think, with Mark Dacascos. It's crime free. Movie. But I also understand there was two. I think there was two from Hong Kong, or one from Hong Kong, and I thought I read somewhere that there was a Russian one, which that's a trip. So I don't know anything about those, and I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen them anywhere online. But um, it all starts with the manga, like everything else, right? Crying Freeman. So uh, thanks again. Um, if this is your first time checking out my channel, check out my other videos. There's hopefully other stuff that will interest you. Um, hit, click the subscribe button down here so you can be notified of next time I put up another video. It might be something you'll be interested in. So thank you, everybody. See you later.